As a developer, you're going through a lot of uncertainty these times. The global economy is in a shift. It seems less and less companies are really looking for developers. And then there is AI, giving us the feeling that every other day we are moving closer to homelessness. This won't be another AI won't replace developers but only those not using it type of video. It will also not be another video that makes you panic even more. I instead want to bring a little order and calm into all the scaremongering. I've been developing software for 14 years and that experience I will combine with the real facts and data and then I will give you a concrete action plan at the end that will let you proceed with your career calmly. 30th of November 2022. The first public version of ChatGPT is released running on GPT 3.5. About half a year later, GPT 4 is released. Another six months and GPT 4 Turbo goes live. And many other competitors like DeepSea, Claude, Gemini join in the following years. And this rapid release of new models is what really makes AI progress feel unstoppable. But is that really the case? To get a feeling for that, we need to be able to compare models objectively. But how do we actually measure the quality of an AI model, especially in coding terms? How do we know if we're really making progress? Coming up with some tests is easy, but measuring the true real-world capabilities is definitely not. Measuring how good a model is in coding terms has started to be measured with a so-called human eval test. It's in the end a set of 164 handcrafted Python programming problems, each having a function signature, doc string, around 8 unit tests per problem. And this test simply then measures the functional correctness of an AI model. So whether the code it generates actually works for the given problem. And based on this, the so-called pass k metric is measured, where k can be any whole number. So the pass 1 metric would, for example, mean that a single generated solution passes all tests of that Python function. Pass 10 would therefore mean that out of 10 generated solutions from an AI model, at least one passes all tests, and so on. And if we take a look at the pass 1 rates for the very initial ChatGPT release, we're at about 48%. So this means that model has solved 48% of coding problems with the first try where all tests pass. And just one year later, with GPT-4 Turbo, this number went up to 88%, and that was 2.5 years ago. And what sounds very scary here doesn't actually mean anything yet. This test in the end just shows how well AI can write algorithms and solve very clearly defined problems. The real coding world is very different different, however, unless your job is designing coding interviews at big tech companies. And yes, of course, there are also tests that help us to measure the quality of an AI model in more real-world settings, most commonly the so-called SWE bench test family. This is in the end a set of 2,294 task instances where a model's real software engineering capabilities are measured and checks the typical agentic coding where an AI simply has to navigate through a real code base and solve tasks. Specifically, an AI gets a GitHub Python repository with a real open issue, and the AI has to then generate a PR that fixes that issue, so a patch after all. And with that SWE bench test, the initial results from the first models were devastating. For example, Claude 2 solved only about 2% of issues in October 2023. But then there's also the SWE bench verify test, which is in the end a set of 500 human-validated real-world coding tasks that have been extracted from the original set of over 2,000 tasks. So it's just an optimized set after all where tasks having problems with ambiguous descriptions or unreliable tests were removed. And the best model for coding as of right now is Claude Opus 4.5. And it has reached a score of 80.9% in that SWE bench verified test. So about four out of five GitHub issues have been solved correctly by the model in a real repository. So does that mean we are just 20% away from our end? No, of course not. Just like the real coding world is not about writing algorithms all day, it's also not about writing smaller GitHub patches all day. And that's also what people creating these tests have realized, which is why there is the SWE Bench Pro, which is in the end the most rigorous version as of right now. This pro version spans 1,865 tasks across 41 repositories spanning multiple different domains. Furthermore, it works with under-specified issues since that in the end reflects real developer workflows, since requirements are simply really accurate and complete. And here with this SWE Bench Pro test, the most modern model, Claude Opus 4.5, has reached a score of about 45%. And yes, that is quite impressive. And it's also quite likely that the score will also rise a bit more in the next months and years. But here's the thing. It still does not have that much to do with real-world software development. The real world is more than vibe coding. And there are still so, so, so many open questions about how certain things should be solved by AI in future, if it can solve them at all. First and foremost, compliance liability. I mean, as a corporate company, 
you are liable for the software that you put out there. And a single little issue that results in a data breach or violating a law can really bring you into huge trouble. Would you really like to hand this over to an AI without checking it in some way? And if you check it in some way, wouldn't that require a developer again? But then there's also IT security, and this really becomes more and more important. Do you really want to count on an AI protecting your user's data and your systems? A single issue could cost you your business if you're unlucky. But then there's also domain knowledge, which is really currently one of AI's biggest weaknesses. There's really a crucial distinction between two things AI models need. On the one hand, context. So what you can provide in an AI session, like the file you're working on, related files, documentation, and so on. But then there's also domain knowledge, like your team's architectural conventions, for example, business logic and why things are the way they are, a historical context, so why certain things have been done the way they were, things like uh, internal API behavior, some kinds of quirks you've experienced in the past, and so on. And the fact that AI really, really struggles with domain knowledge shows in the tests really well as well. Since the SWE Bench protest also exists for real commercial repositories. And here, the top model only achieves a score of about 17%, which is significantly worse than with the public repositories. So what does all that show? Well, it on the one hand shows that AI is progressing. That is a fact. At least when taking a look at these test results, however. But it also shows that we are very, very far from it replacing a whole developer, since there are so many open questions about whether LLMs can even reach human-level intelligence or go past that. And just to go over some of these open questions to give you an idea of how uncertain it even is that AI will be able to, to take over whole jobs, the biggest question is, how do we really make AI models more powerful in future? Because so far, what all these AI companies are doing is they are simply making the models larger. But just making the models bigger has extremely diminishing returns. So the cost value relation gets too bad when just scaling up a model. For example, there was another AGI test in which the best model used 170 times more resources to generate an 88% score, while the high efficiency version just scored 12% lower. So in other words, what this means is to just get that 12% plus 170 times the money had to be spent, which was about $10,000 for this test. And that was a model that still failed on some very, very easy tasks that a human could solve easily. So we don't even want to think about the models that solve tasks humans can't. But then there is another question. Can AI really solve multi-file system level problems reliably? Because here's what I didn't tell you. The SWE Bench Verify Test, where top models really score 80%, is actually heavily biased towards single file tasks. And in fact, there are 86% of them in the set of tasks. So tasks that can be solved by making a change in just one file. And if we just look at the other 14% of multi-file problems in that test, the top models only scored 40%. And we're looking at the basic SWE test here, not the pro one yet. Another question is, can AI really become better than humans if it can only learn from human material. And very related question four, where will the new training data really come from? Because right now AI has plenty of human data to learn from, but more and more data online is actually created by AI, which AI again learns from. And if I were to tell you to just look at your own notes that you've made and then learn new things just by looking at these notes, then that learning would be quite limited. And the same thing is and will be the case with AI. And the fifth question is, can AI really learn domain knowledge? Because the numbers really show that this is currently an unsolved problem with no approach being even close in solving this. AI can currently fine tune your code, fix a few issues, but it really can transfer real reasoning. And as promised, here's my personal view and a very clear recommendation for you on how to act in this new year. I've been personally using AI models for coding from the day they came out, and initially the progress has been really, really impressive. However, not just my own, but also really the impression of many, many senior developers I know is that AI has hit a plateau since about two years. We're in the end still fighting with the same issues we were fighting with two years ago. AI hallucinates a lot. It still forgets about things you've told it before about. It still ignores crucial things from your prompt. Um, and AI-generated text and code can still be spotted from miles away. And all that have been exactly the problems two years ago. With the quality of the output only feeling minimally better. And it is super far from having real expert knowledge. I'm personally into native Android development for the past seven years. And I would say I have quite in-depth knowledge of the platform and its quirks. 
And so often, AI has absolutely no idea what it's talking about and has no idea of drawbacks that an approach may have. And then you simply ask it, hey, uh, couldn't this approach have problem A or problem B? And it tells you, oh, yes, of course, I didn't think about that. You're so right. This has happened two years ago, this still happens, and this will still be the problem in two years from now. Every other day right now, it really feels like a new AI model comes out, version 5.0, 5.1, 5.2, but there is hardly any noticeable difference. AI is really not going to replace you if you are afraid of that. You will hurt your career so, so much more if you always keep this in your mind and think, but what if in three years I'm jobless? Those tests that I've been talking about here show some progress, but they are just tests. They are still so, so far away from real-world software development, which is something we simply can't measure that easily. And the most insane thing that a company could do is to fire a developer because of AI. That has happened, but now it starts to backfire with lots of big tech companies regretting that because they've realized an hallucinating LLM does not really substitute a developer with real work experience, with real domain knowledge and real skills. What is true, however, is that you of course have to use AI for your job. It is a help for our day-to-day -day job, but it will stay a help for micro tasks. We see so many parallels actually to when the internet came out where every company just added .com to their name because it sounded cool. Nowadays, every company that makes an API call to open AI has AI in its name. And yes, I would say that AI is as revolutionary as the internet, but also not more than that. So here is my concrete advice to you as a developer in 2026. Get into AI, understand how it works. Use the models from Claude, they are simply the best from coding. Use them a lot to find out what they can and what they can't do. But most importantly, understand things yourself. If in 2026 you don't deeply understand the technology that you work with, you're not truly an expert in your field, then you will be lost. You won't be able to assess the quality of a model's output, you will be nothing else than a vibe coder writing unstable code that breaks without even knowing why. So don't just learn about what you have to do in order to make things work, but most importantly learn about why things work when they do and also why they don't when they don't. And with that combination, you will really become an unstoppable developer in 2026 and also have really no issues finding work. And if you want me to help you get that in-depth knowledge for either native Android development or KMP development, then now is the time to apply to my mentorship program in which we really brush up your skills to a senior developer level. Down below is a link. Applying is free, takes two minutes. And other than that, thanks so much for watching this video. I will see you back in the next one. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.